Right, so this is all about the, the wonderful, mysterious world of the Hardy-Weinberg or Hardy-Weinberg formula or Hardy-Weinberg principle. I'm not actually sure it's pronounced, to be honest. I don't think it matters. Um, anyway, well, I suppose it matters if you call Weinberg. Um, a couple of assumptions, there's four assumptions we make. I think it's really worth you remembering what these are. I'm not going to write them all out. They are in your book. Um, we assume that populations are very large that we're dealing with, and we assume there's random mating going on. There's no advantage for a particular genotype, uh, whether that's homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive, or heterozygous. And there's no mutation or migration, uh, or indeed genetic drift in out of the population. All those things aside, we're just going to assume that they work. Um, so Heidi Weinberg is all about, <coughs> excuse me, genetic conditions, really. And what they're trying to do with it is, it's a bit of a mathematical trick, really. Um, to work out probabilities of um, allele combinations being uh, present. And more importantly, it, it's useful for working out heterozygotes in a population. Why is this important? In the case of a genetic condition, you could be looking here for people who are carriers of a certain condition. So how many people are carrying that allele in the population? Uh, do we need to screen for it and, and so on? Now, <coughs> excuse me. Let's um, let's just make up a, a, a condition here. They'll probably give you something that you've never heard of uh, on, on a test anyway. So let, let's just say it's purple, purple syndrome it's called. And what happens in purple syndrome doesn't even matter, but we're going to say one in 50,000 people um, have this condition. And the question wants to know how many people are carriers of this condition. Okay. Uh, there are two formulas to remember, which are... P plus Q equals 1, that's the easy one, and the other one is P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1. All right. Now, I would approach these questions by, first of all, writing out what each thing means. I think that's the easiest way to do it. P is representing the dominant allele, and Q is representing the recessive allele. Um, so if you think in, in within 50,000 people, every person has got two copies of, of um, each of these alleles, but the total number of alleles must even out to, to 1, which means is the same as saying 100%. Okay? Um, now, this one is the one that gives people problems. If you think of it like this, let's imagine you had... Uh, I don't have to imagine, I'll draw one. Let's imagine we had a, a Punnett square, and for purple syndrome, I'll just use uh, big A and little a. This, so I did a Punnett square, and I, I got this. Okay? Um... Now, it's all about probability. If you remember when you did, um, in, in maths, where you did things like flipping a coin um, to, to see what the uh, probabilities was, and you'd say, well, what's the probability of it coming up heads? It's 50-50 or half. And then you said, what's the possibility of it coming up heads twice in a row? Well, it's half times a half. So this idea of probabilities of multiplying the things together, you've probably already come across, okay? What we're doing here is saying, not what's the possibility of getting one of those alleles, what's the possibility of getting two dominant alleles? So you're multiplying it to get the probability together, if you like. Hence, that one is like saying um, P times P, or P squared. So P squared represents the homozygous dominant um, genotype coming up. And in a similar way, Q squared would represent the homozygous recessive. Notice here we've got two possible versions of uh, the heterozygote. Hence, we say to PQ is the heterozygous. Okay. Now, once you've got those in your head, it becomes a bit easier. So, what we're going to say is, I don't know, put the calculator back up. What we're going to do is try and work out um, what these various possibilities are. So what do we know? Well, we know that one in five hundred, uh, fifty thousand 50,000 people, sorry, um, has the condition, purple syndrome. In other words, we know one in 50,000 people is homozygous recessive. But one in 50,000, we don't want that as a, a number here. We want it as a percentage. So how do we do it? It's dead easy. One divided by 50,000. And you see my answer comes out um, as this decimalized 0.0002. Okay, so that's Q squared. Now, if I want to get Q from that, it's very straightforward. I simply root it. So Q is 
0.00447. Now I could stick with that. Uh, I'm just going to shove it in the memory. There is some, um, th they will allow you a bit of room on these calculations. So if I rounded that off, for example, then use that in my calculations, um, th they would allow it within a certain limit. If you can, keep a track of it in the memory. So that's Q. Once I know what Q is, if P plus Q is 1, 1 minus Q must be P. So I go uh, 1 minus, and that was my Q value. And there's my p-value, 0.99557 and so on. Okay, now this is the point where it, it's useful to work out this number because I've got, got it all in the memory. So that was my p-value, p times, and that was what my q-value was, is that. But do remember, there's two of them. So I multiply my answer by 2. And there we go, I get 0 0.0089 uh, and, and whatever that the rest is. Now I could work out, if I wanted to, uh, P squared, I could square that number, I could work, uh, Q squared, I've already worked out in fact, haven't I? Because it, it worked out it was 0 0.002. So I could get those two values. I'm not going to put them in for the moment, you'll, you'll see why in a second. So what does this value actually mean for me? That's the percentage of the population which are uh, uh, heterozygous, so in other words, are carriers. How do I turn that into an actual number? It's quite simple. I just take my original population and multiply it by that value. So my original population was 50,000. One, two, three. And I get, oh, I'll just put Y in there, you know what I mean, rather than writing everything out. So I've, I've got a value for 2PQ of 445.21. Now, of course, I can't have 0.213595 of a person, but it's because of the way that the, the numbers sort of work out and, and the probability. So I'm not going to worry about that for the moment. 445. Okay. Now, let me just go back and work some more numbers out. So this, this value here is telling me how many people out of the, the population of 50,000 are carriers. Now, can I sort of backtrack a little bit and, and work out and see if all this works? Let's just take this um, number again. So 0.995527. If I square that, I get 0.99107. If I multiply that by the population, 50,000, I get... Um, 49,553. Now remember my formula up here. So 49,553 is my P squared. That's my 2PQ value. Let's see what happens if I add that to 445.21. Why is that significant? because that was my total population. Let's round that off to 49,999. At my original 50,000, I'm one short. Where's that, fifth, uh, where's that extra one gone? That's the one in 50,000, which was represented by my homozygous recessive numbers. And the whole thing adds up.